So the addition and subtraction of signed numbers is a big topic, and so this is part two. So just a quick recap, the additive inverse of a written minus a is the number that satisfies a plus the additive inverse is equal to zero. Addition of integers is both associative and commutative. For any integers a and b, a plus the additive inverse of b is the same as a minus b, and a minus b is the same as the additive inverse of b minus a. And finally, an important and useful idea, you can have anything you want as long as it's paid for. So let's try to find 5 minus the additive inverse of 4. And again, in order to subtract the additive inverse of 4, we have to have an additive inverse of 4. So we can have anything we want as long as it's paid for. And in this case, the price for the additive inverse of 4, well, we know that the number plus its additive inverse is going to be 0. And so that tells us since 0 is 4 plus its additive inverse, and we can always add 0. It's free. So 5 minus the additive inverse of 4, well, that's the same as 5 plus 0 minus the additive inverse of 4. 0 is the same thing as 4 plus the additive inverse of 4, so we can replace it. And here at the end, we are adding the additive inverse of 4, and then we're immediately taking it away. So that last bit just drops out. And so we have 5 plus 4, which is equal to 9. And again, we might take a look at the numbers involved, 5, 4, and 9. And we note that 5 minus the additive inverse of 4 is 9, which is the same as 5 plus 4. And so this suggests the following result. For any integers a and b, a minus the additive inverse of b is the same as a plus b. So let's take 3 minus the additive inverse of 4. Now because one of our main theorems is that the addition of the integers is associative and commutative, it's actually easier to think about everything in terms of addition. So anytime we have a subtraction, we're going to want to rewrite it in some fashion. And so our theorem says that for any integers a and b, a minus the additive inverse of b is the same as a plus b, which is this beautiful addition. So I can rewrite this additive inverse of 3 minus additive inverse of 4 as additive inverse of 3 plus 4. Because addition is commutative, I can rearrange this as 4 plus additive inverse of 3. We also have a theorem that says a plus additive inverse of b is the same as a minus b. So this is going to be 4 minus 3, and we know what that is. This last operation brings up an important idea, which we can introduce as follows. We want to find the additive inverse of the additive inverse of 5. Now, you might read this as subtract the additive inverse of 5 and think about the theorem we just introduced. The problem is that this is not actually a subtraction symbol, and the reason being, there's nothing here to subtract. Subtraction requires two numbers. There's only one number here. So our theorem is actually not useful. Instead, we have to go back to our definition of the additive inverse. So our definition of additive inverse says that whatever this is, if we add it to the additive inverse of 5, we should get 0. But we also know that 5 plus the additive inverse of 5 is equal to 0. And because of commutativity and associativity, we can also rewrite this as additive inverse of 5 plus 5 is equal to 0. And let's compare these two equations. Both of them are sums equal to 0. Both of them have additive inverse of 5 plus something. 
and that suggests that our somethings have to be the same. And so this suggests that as a general rule for any integer, the additive inverse of the additive inverse is just the number itself. So for example, let's say I want to find the additive inverse of the quantity 3 minus the quantity 8 minus 1. So the thing inside the parentheses has to be done first, 8 minus 1. That's 7. Everything else stays the same. Now I have to find 3 minus 7. My theorem says that's the same as the additive inverse of 7 minus 3. So that gives me the additive inverse of 4. And I want the additive inverse of the additive inverse. And so that's going to be 4. So what about additive inverse of 8 plus additive inverse of 7. So we might proceed as follows. This is an addition, but unless we actually know what the answer is, we have to do something to change it. So let's see what our theorems say. So we have a plus additive inverse of b is the same as a minus b. a minus b is the same as additive inverse of b minus a and a minus the additive inverse of b is the same as a plus b. And the thing we might notice here is that our original expression is plus an additive inverse. And so that suggests we can use the first theorem. a plus additive inverse is the same as a minus number. So additive inverse of 8 plus additive inverse of 7 is the same as additive inverse of 8 minus 7. Now what? Well, this is a subtraction, and we do have this theorem that says a minus b is the same as additive inverse of b minus a. I can reverse the order of the subtraction. And so additive inverse of 8 minus 7 can be reversed to additive inverse of 7 minus the additive inverse of 8. But wait, there's more. I'm subtracting an additive inverse. And I have a theorem that says if I subtract an additive inverse, it's the same as adding the corresponding numbers. So this 7 minus the additive inverse of 8 is the same as 7 plus 8, which will evaluate and get our final answer, additive inverse of 15. And again, if we look at our numbers 8, 7, and 15, the relationship that we seem to have here is that the additive inverse of A plus the additive inverse of B is the same as the additive inverse of A plus B. How about minus 4, minus 8? So pulling in our theorems. So this seems to be a subtraction, so I'll use the theorem that a minus b is the same as the additive inverse of b minus a. So I can reverse the order of the terms, additive inverse 4 and 8. This will be the additive inverse of 8 minus the additive inverse of 4. But I'm subtracting an additive inverse, so that becomes a plus. This is 8 plus 4. And I can evaluate the term inside the parentheses as 12, and so my final answer, additive inverse of 12.